Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at measurement conversions. We're going to answer the question, what are the different units of measurement and how do I convert between them? So a measurement can be converted to represent an equal amount with a different unit of measure, such as inches to feet or grams to kilograms. Measurements can be converted by using a proportion and then we will solve with cross products. The way you can do this is make sure that you plan how your proportion will be set up with words and then we're going to write the ratio with the information that is known. This information can be found on your formula chart or in the problem. And then set up a ratio with the information that is unknown. So we're going to go from words, we're going to write a ratio for what we know and then we will set up the ratio with what we do not know and then we will solve that proportion. So let's look at number one. It says, how many feet are in 16 yards? So if you did not remember how many feet are in a yard on your formula chart on the second page, you have this whole page of measurement conversions. So one yard equals three feet. So now I can use that to help set up my proportion. Remember, we're gonna do the words first. So we are going to do feet over yards whenever we set up our proportion. Okay, now let's set up with what we know. We know that there is three feet in one yard. And now I want to know how many feet are in 16 yards. So there is the proportion I will be solving, three over one equals X over 16. And now I'm going to cross and multiply to solve this. Three times 16 is 48, and one times X is X. So there is the missing value, and that means that there are 48 feet in 16 yards. Okay, let's look at number two, how many pints are in 16 cups? So I'm going to plan out my proportion with words first. I'm gonna plan out my ratios as cups over pints. So let's look at the formula chart to determine how many cups are in a pint, which is right here. There are two cups in one pint. So I can use that to set up my known ratio. There are two cups in one pint. And the question asked me to determine how many pints are in 16 cups. So the cups goes on top, so 16 cups. I want to know how many pints. So the ratio I'm going to be solving is two over one equals 16 over X. And now I'm gonna cross multiply to solve this. Two times X is two X, and one times 16 is 16, and then we would divide by two, and 16 divided by two is eight. So that means that 16 cups are in eight pints. Okay, let's look at number three. It says, how many gallons are in 96 quarts? So let's set up our words, how we're gonna set up our ratios. I want to know how many quarts are in a gallon. That's gonna be my known that we'll use to set up a proportion. So let's look at the formula chart. Quarts, there are two Sorry, we're doing quarts to gallons. There are four quarts in one gallon. Four quarts in one gallon. And I want to know if there are 96 quarts, how many gallons? So the proportion I will be solving is four over one equals 96 over X. So let's cross multiply to solve this. Four times X is four X. One times 96 is 96. I would divide by four. And 96 is four less than 100. 100 divided by four is 25. 
5, so that means 96 divided by 4 is 24. You also could have done long division. I just did it in my head. So that means that there are 24 gallons in 96 quarts. Okay, let's look at number four. How many inches are in 12 yards? So I'm going to figure out how many inches are in a yard, which I know that one, it's 36 inches in one yard. And I want to know how many inches are in 12 yards. So I set it up with words, what I know, and then a ratio with my unknown. And now I have this proportion, 36 over one equals X over 12, and I can cross multiply to figure out how many inches are in a yard. So I'm gonna have to do 36 times 12, two times six is 12, three times two is six plus one is seven, then one times six is six, and one times three is three. Now I'm gonna add, that would be two, seven plus six is 13, and one plus three is four. So 36 times 12 was 432, and then one times X is X. So that means that there are 432 inches in 12 yards. Number five says how many fluid ounces are in two pints? So I need to set this up. How many fluid ounces are in a pint? I'm gonna have to look at the formula chart for that one. Fluid ounces in a pint. Uh, one cup has eight fluid ounces and one pint has two cups. So that means that one pint would have two cups with eight ounces each. So we do two times eight, which is 16 fluid ounces. So one pint is going to have 16 fluid ounces. So 16 fluid ounces in one pint, there's my known. Now let's set up a ratio of our unknown. It said, how many fluid ounces are in two pints? So it'll be 16 over one equals X over two for my proportion. And now I can cross multiply. 16 times two is 32. One times X is X. So that means there are 32 fluid ounces in two pints. Number six says, how many centimeters are in two kilometers? So I need to know how many centimeters are in one kilometer. So let's look at our formula chart for that. So one kilometer equals a thousand meters and one meter equals a hundred centimeters. So to figure out how many centimeters are in a kilometer, I would need to multiply by the 100 centimeters and that would be a hundred thousand centimeters in one kilometer. So one kilometer has a hundred thousand centimeters. So a hundred thousand centimeters in one kilometer. And I want to know how many centimeters are in two kilometers. So the proportion I'm solving is a hundred thousand over one equals X over two. And now I'm going to cross multiply to solve two times a hundred thousand is 200,000 and then one times X is X. So there is the missing value and that means that there are 200,000 centimeters in two kilometers. Let's look at number seven. A bag of candies weighs two pounds. There are about 430 grams in one pound. About how many grams 
is a bag of candies. So this time they are giving us the information. They're giving us the known. I don't have to go look at my formula chart. So I want to know, or I, my words are grams over pounds, and then they told me the known. There's about 430 grams in one pound. And then they told me that the bag of candies weighs two pounds. And I want to know how many grams are in that two pound bag of candies. So there's my words, what I knew, and then I set up a ratio of my unknown. So my proportion is 430 over one equals X over two. And now I'm gonna cross and multiply to solve. Two times 400, 30 would be 860 and then 1 times x is x. So there's the missing value. That means that there are about 860 pounds in, sorry, 860 grams in that two pound bag of candy. Okay, number eight says the Empire State Building is about 1,254 feet. There is about three feet in one meter. About how many meters tall would the Empire State be? Empire State Building be. So let's set up our words first. We're comparing how many feet are in one meter. And they are wanting us to use this estimate. There are about three feet in one meter. Three feet per meter. And then it says the Empire State Building is 1,254 feet. How many meters is it? So there's my words, known and unknown, that I use to help me set up the proportion of 3 over 1 equals 1,254 all over x. So let's cross and multiply to solve. 3 times x is 3x and 1 times 1,254 is 1,254. So I need to do long division here. Three can go into 12 four times. I subtract, get zero, bring down the five. Five can, or three can go into five one time. One times three is three. I'll subtract, I get two, bring down the four. Three can go into 24 eight times, and three times eight is 24, so we are done. So my missing value is 418. So that means that there are, or the Empire State Building is about 418 feet tall. Okay, let's look at number nine. One mile is about 1.6 kilometers. If two houses are 10 miles away, how many kilometers apart are they? So we are comparing miles to kilometers. They told us one mile is about 1.6 kilometers. And if the two houses are 10 miles away, how many kilometers apart are they? So there's my words, the information I knew, and my unknown that I used to help me write the proportion of 1 over 1.6 equals 10 over x. And now I'm going to cross multiply to solve. 1 times x is x, and 10 times 1.6 is 16. So that means if the houses are 10 miles apart, that is about 16 kilometers apart.